This is the rare Mega Tiger biome, and it's very beautiful and unique in Minecraft. I wanted to create something that fit perfectly within this scene. So today I want to teach you how to make this, a wooden slash log cabin house in this lovely forest setting. So let's jump straight into it. The first thing you need to do is find a relatively flat area or a platform and get rid of as many trees as you can on top of that layer so that you've got space to make your house. It will take a while because the trees are extraordinarily tall. Once you've done that, we need to lay down a basic foundation shape. Now, I did a very, very simple two block shape which is connected in the middle and one of our walls is extraordinarily long. We don't want to shoot ourselves in the foot for later, so we might want to break that up as it's difficult to detail one large wall and it fit just between the gap in those two trees. I then raised up our foundation just a couple of blocks to give it some height off the ground. We can then start using our primary block which is going to be spruce wood, my favourite one incidentally. It fits perfectly with the podsol on the ground and the surrounding trees. So unsurprisingly, we're going to make a framework based around our shape on the floor. But because that was very simple, a lot of our shape and prominent features will come from the roof of this build. So the framework doesn't just include the corners of our layout, but also the valleys and the ridges of the roof, which we need to plan out in advance so that we know what parts are going to be where. So I decided to add large dormers and lots of roofs that not only intermingle with each other, but they change orientation. Making sure that your roof isn't just one long continuous strip is quite important in a build like this. And you'll notice that the shapes on the foundation don't perfectly line up with each other. So when we go to do the roof on the top, connecting all of the bits can pose a bit of a problem. The thing to remember here is that people won't necessarily be looking at the roof, so as long as from the ground it looks fairly natural, you are completely okay. So you'll see that I changed my mind a fair amount, but in the end, it's quite easy to just turn them at right angles and make them link up. On sides where you've got a large face to deal with, you could add a little patio that has no walls at all, but they act as a little entrance into your log cabin. I've kind of not finished the roof, but filling in the walls can really help you work out where you need to go next with it. You'll see that I've got large segments which haven't been filled in, and one of the main reasons is it's hard to always visualise exactly what your house is going to look like. So by filling in the walls, that can help just piece things together at this point. The foundation lays the shape, the roofs have dictated how high it's going to be, and then the walls will help us just fit everything else in together. So at this point, it's a good opportunity to take a look at your build and see if everything is right with it. We haven't done any detailing so that there's no time wasted. It's honestly perfectly acceptable to change as much of the build as possible. The framework and then once you filled it in will give you a good idea of what the build is going to look like. However, some aspects like the big blank walls won't look right until you've filled it in with all of the extra details later on. So filling in the walls takes a little bit of time, as does the roof, but once you've finished, it should start to look like a complete build, minus all of the minor details of course. So you'll notice that my build is actually quite tall, and I think that's a feature of this structure that should be pointed out. Try not to make it too stubby, otherwise the trees are going to dominate, not the house. So around the back, I decided to add all of those details around the foundation that I did earlier, but now that I've got the complete build, I know exactly what it's going to look like. So now it's time to start adding some details. On the top, in the middle, where this roof is particularly bland, I added a giant chimney, which we're going to go in and texture a bit later. So, this is what the house is going to look like for this particular build. Yours, of course, should look slightly different to this, but if you're not happy, now is the time to change it. Just under the roofs, I wanted to add these logs that protrude out from under the overhang. This is what's going to give it its log cabin characteristics. For the most part, it's just a wooden house, but all of these details really improve it to become more log-like. On the corners, I've added these protrusions using slabs, and they only have 
half a block gap in between. I actually decided to do that earlier, but I had a full block in between and it didn't look quite right. So by having only half a block, it really looks like they have these wooden planks stacked on top of each other and again gives it that cabin feel to the build. It might look out of place and it's completely up to you whether you want to add this particular feature or not, but I find that this is probably the most unique thing about this build and I haven't really seen it been done before. So you'll notice that I had a balcony protruding out of my front face. That helped break up some of the large walls that we've got going on. I also textured the foundation by adding some cobblestone staircases to make it look a bit more weathered and likewise on the chimney I added some shape on the top and added some more staircases along with some mossy cobble to make it look more weathered. This is out in the woods, it is exposed to the elements. Now it's time to detail some of the larger faces of walls which have nothing on them currently. The best way to do this is to do some large windows. The choice of colour for your stained glass panes is up to you. I tried white but I also tried brown a little later on. The white works quite well but it does stand out and contrast quite heavily. Maybe brown was nicer but then the entire build is entirely brown. The white does offer some sort of contrast here. I added some spruce framework within the wall to split up some of the large faces of spruce wood and I feel like that worked quite nicely. You need to try and experiment with the space to get the right shapes of windows and sizes. On this side of the building, I'm actually facing a river so I should have made a balcony that extended out over it. but. I decided just to go with some standard detailing. This build took about an hour and 10 minutes to make and complete without interior, so it's not a quick build by any means, but I feel like it is a nice structure for this particular biome and it's well worth giving a shot especially as you mainly need dark oak and spruce wood to complete it. The detailing for the most part is fairly repetitive. Adding that layered effect on the corners helps break up those right angles and in the windows helps detail those large spaces of open wall and the protruding logs help make it look more cabin like. So there's obviously quite a lot of the same detailing going on, but for the most part, it's starting to look good. We can add a few trap doors to give it a bit of contrast, although it does look very, very brown still. Apart from the cobblestone, it's almost entirely brown. So adding some nature with some hanging baskets or some flower pots at the front of the windows can really help bring some colour to this log cabin and it fits with our theming and our setting incredibly well. So there's a few more details to do on the back and I actually decided that I preferred the brown colour to the white on the front, although it doesn't offer much contrast, it does fit quite nicely, although this is probably the most brown build that I've ever made. I still think that it works quite nicely. You may find that you have some right angles which need some extra detailing. Feel free to add any balconies or just extra bits that stick out. They help with the shape quite a lot. So I added just a little thing there and it's not even connected because there is no interior. However, we are almost finished. There's a few things, very minuscule details such as smoke coming out of the chimney. It's always a nice touch if you can be bothered to go up there and place all of that cobweb. And at the front, I wanted to add a little campfire. So you can do a bit of landscaping with a cobblestone wall that just does a circle and have some sort of little used campfire in the middle with some coal ore and podsel around it, along with some chairs that indicate, you know, that this is a used place. And overall, it is now finished. This is our log cabin set in the mega tiger biome. I'm actually kind of proud of this build here. It took a long time. You wouldn't think that it took too long, but it did. And it feels rather dominating, which was the main point. It's nice and tall, and it contrasts really well with all of the surrounding trees. 
This is a pretty rare biome and I've wondered for a long time what could be done here to make a build that really fits. And I didn't want to do just a tree house because I've done a lot of things where you go up the ice spikes, you go up the ender pillars, there's a lot of builds like that. So I wanted to make a nice wooden cabin out in the woods and maybe one day I'll visit somewhere like that in real life. So that's the build for today. A big, big thank you to everyone that has made it this far in the video. You are the reason I can do what I do. So there's not a lot else to say, but thank you very much for watching, everybody, and goodbye.